from our sponsor. It's Cigarette Sun Pack with a famous asbestos fire grenade wielder. I'm Donna Jackson. I'm the writer and director of Dust. I decided to write the theatre production about asbestos because I kept meeting people who were affected by asbestos somewhere in their lives. They kept telling me, asbestos, asbestos. So I did some research and I was shocked and horrified to find out how many people have been affected by dust from asbestos. And so I wrote this theatre production. Educational, definitely. It brings you up really high, brings you down really low, and then, you know, at the end of it, you feel really good about it. But yes, it's got really high moments, really sad moments. Um, so educational, great piece of theatre work, great show to be in and a great show to see. People are very, very fascinated by it all and particularly the older um, community members of Shepparton, I think because the, the asbestos is hitting them harder than the younger generations. They don't understand the whole asbestos side of it. In writing Dust, I decided to incorporate community people in the production and so Dust can accommodate between 40 and maybe 65 people in the show. And in each place I collaborate with people I call top dogs. So in each town there's a top dog of acting, dancing, choir or production and they work locally to bring local people into the theatre production. I think sometimes you come into these things with expectations and that can ruin it. Um, you know we didn't expect to, to make the connections we have. We hope that uh, you know, in the future we can continue this sort of stuff and realise that there's people outside of our communities that have the same uh, passions and the same drive to do what we're trying to do in our little neck of the woods. So we had the first information session in Melbourne um, with the three, uh, the three regional areas of Geelong, Sale and uh, Shepparton. Performances of Dust have happened in Ballarat, in Williamstown in Melbourne, in Geelong in Victoria, Shepparton and Sale. In each of those areas we've worked with different communities. In some places it's been with quite a young cast. Sometimes we've worked with people who work primarily in amateur dramatic shows. Sometimes we've worked with dance schools or we've worked with trades and labour councils, people involved with unions, people from the building industry. Sometimes it's been school groups. Sometimes it's been more of a general community. It's been incredible from uh, the first weekend in Melbourne where we all got together with Donna and the production crew to see how it works, how this stuff really works. Uh, Donna was straight to the point, she had it worked out. Uh, that sort of blew us away a little bit early to start with, but that was great. From then on in we were like, this is going to be a really good production. We brought it together in a really short period of time by having uh, local, they call them top dogs, doing the, uh, the, uh, the rehearsing. Um, a local top dog training the choir and then we put the whole thing together in, a, in less than a week. It's been really successful from our point of view to, put, to do it that way. I was approached to uh, take, uh, take part in, uh, in the production of Dust. Top dog in acting um, and uh, that was to collate together a group of actors in the Geelong region to take the roles of different areas of the production of Dust. The show all up, it was really good. I'd actually didn't expect that it would be as good as it was. It was, yeah, it surprised me. It was very moving, and I think an audience member it would have been even better. We've got people aged from 12 or 14 to 65, 70, and that's just, that's really amazing for us in our community for a start, and we're all having a great time doing it. Because Dust has such a large cast of 65 or so, or somewhere between 40 and 65, those people bring their family members to come and see the production that they're performing in. And it's been a way of guaranteeing quite good audiences for Dust wherever it goes. What made me uh, want to be involved, um, I suppose, personally, uh, my uncle passed away from his celioma back in 1999. Yes, I knew he was sick and I knew he had to use the, the oxygen and you know it was a horrible way to go. But I never really took in the sort of reasons to why, you know, and how. And uh, this has actually given me those, those answers. I think just even knowing that this performance is out there and it's telling their story of, you know, the tragedy that's befallen their family in such an amazing, powerful way. I actually know a little bit about it because I'm married to a boilermaker who's always worked in construction. So 
It's interesting because he's in his early 50s and so he's been through the whole process of when you're young and people start saying it's dangerous and you're just laughing. And, um, and then he's moved right through to, you know, now you're drilling into a wall at a power station and you stop as soon as you realise. I learnt there was such thing as asbestos. I never heard of it and that it's very dangerous. I have had uh, first experience as a fireman fighting fires with asbestos and uh, that's very much to the fore in, uh, in firefighting and also the message to people that uh, it, is, it is with us, will be with us for many, many years to come. Dust is about artists and people from the community collaborating together to make a strong stand about resilience and to also show respect for people who have asbestos diseases. And we look for any way that we can actually get the message out there. I mean, we still find that people know that there's something about asbestos that's not good news, but they don't quite know the details of it. And I think this way in which, you know, there's a little bit of information and, and a little bit of medicine, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of medicine, a little bit of sugar, and it really helps people to just take it in in digestible bits. I was brought down, demolishing a shed in our own hilltop land. One day the dust will settle on this long forgotten land. They say there are secret places there untouched by.